All right, my friends, let's attack. What does it take to become the next top listing agent in the marketplace? Now, we're mid-year through 2022. The market is kind of starting to get a little weird. Things are shifting. So we all know that security lives in being a great listing agent. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the five phases that I've identified to become the next mega listing agent. If you haven't already, please go ahead and subscribe to my channel. That supports me. I hit the notification bell if you want to follow along and you're a YouTuber. If you don't go on YouTube a lot, then you might want to just jump on my weekly newsletter that I send out with my latest content. Now, as we dive into the five phases, I want you to know that I've created two different playlists on my YouTube channel. I will link to those at the very end of this video and also put them down below in the description box. So if I cover a topic and you need to go way deeper into that topic, you want more details of how to get that done, then just jump into those and you'll get more information about what you need to do to be successful. So let's dive in. Phase number one to become the next top listing agent. I wrote it down as this. I said, the business decision that no one told you about. Well, there's two things in the business decision. What are you talking about, Patrick, business decision? Business decision number one is the business model that you're going to be running. Well, what business models? Business model number one is traditionally we see a lot of expired cancel for sale by owner. That is a very successful business model to become a top listing agent. Well, there's also a business model number two called direct mail. And a lot of you, you see mega successful listing agents who really mastered direct mail. Well, there's a third business model called geographic farming. And a lot of people have really become successful with geographic farming in a geographic territory and really owning that territory. Well, there's a fourth business model, which is that I've seen agents who've been super successful with helping buyers for over five years. And then after the fifth year, they start transitioning to a listing agent because all their buyers start calling them to help them sell their home and to sell and buy the next home. And so in year five through 10, they become great listing agents organically. And then the fifth business model is really a kind of combination of different niches. So some people may be into probate. I have a client I'm working with on that. I have another client who's really getting good at absentee owners and he's starting to become a top listing agent just through that one channel. So there's a lot of little niches in there. So what's the business model that makes the most sense for you to go all in on? There's a second part to this analysis, which is what I refer to as the riddle. And I've done a video on this, so you might have to check this out, but the riddle is really, there's you, there's your marketplace, and then there's all of your options on the listing lead types, right? So what do I mean by that? Well, there's you, you know, what's your skill sets, your background, your resources? Uh, do you have a sales background, no sales background, marketing background? Are you from this market, like born and raised? Or are you like I was, I was new to San Diego. I didn't know anyone really, no past clients. I had no sphere of influence. I had nothing. So I had to kind of create from there. So there's you and there's an understanding of that. Then there's the second part, which is understanding the marketplace. Well, my client in downtown DC is very different than my client who's out in Virginia, more of the suburbs. You know, then you have a client who's in Boulder, which is very different than Denver. And then I have a client in Seattle, which is very different than San Diego. So what market are we talking about? You know, my client in Des Moines, Iowa, super, and I have another one in Cleveland, Ohio. So, you know, there's the marketplace has a totally different uh, experience for agents. And then the third thing in the riddle is the listing lead types. Okay, so I did a video that there's 33 different ways to get a listing. And so what are we talking about here? Okay, so in phase one, it's really a little bit more of a business analysis and a business decision about what to go all in on. Phase two, here's how I wrote it. Committing to the real work and earning it as a top listing agent. There's three things that I wrote down on phase number two and Phase, the first thing is accepting the two facts. Fact number one is it takes anywhere between one to two years to master a seller lead type. Fact number two is every lead type, there's a framework that you really need to be aware of. Okay, I've done a lot of content on the framework. Let's just touch it for a second. In the framework, I say there's a, there's a mindset that you need to have to be successful with this lead type. Let's say, call it expired, FISBOs, direct mail, geographic farm, working with buyers. There's a mindset that you need to maintain. Then there's a mindset of the customer that you need to understand. Then, of course, is the customer's journey and understanding the customer journey. Then there is the scripts and the skills to be successful with that lead type. Then there is the math, the numbers of the lead type. What's the total addressable market for that lead type in your market? What percentage of the market share do you want? And then kind of how does the math work with your kind of lead generation system, right? The math. 
Then, of course, is the different services and service providers and technology and tools out there. So which one of the service providers are the best ones for you to build a relationship with to be successful with this lead type? Yikes. Then there is the schedule. Well, because we all know we've got to be more consistent. So well, what's the weekly schedule? Like how much time do you really need to commit to on a weekly basis to be able to fast speed this process up? Instead of taking two years, how about we get it down to one? And instead of taking one year, can we get there in six months? It's all going to depend on how much time you commit on a weekly basis with your schedule. And then the last but not least, of course, is what is your financial goal in year one? and then year two, and how much money do you want to make and how much money are you committed to to make from this one lead type? So there's a framework, right? So you can see it's a little bit more complex than just, hey, here's a script, here's some numbers, go at it, good luck, you're going to do great, <laughs> right? The second thing I wrote down on earning it is really becoming an expert of the seller's customer journey. What do I mean by this? See, when you become a top listing agent, you start to develop advice. Advice for the home seller that's six months out from selling their home. Hey, here's the best advice. Here's some research. Here's some tools. Here's some resources. Here's some things I can help you with to help you get a better, reduce your stress, create a better outcome. That's advice on the customer journey. Hey, 30 days before, here's all the great things that I do to help a seller 30 days before you put your home on the market. Here's the things to avoid. Here's the things you need to know. Here's the things that will help you to be successful along the path. Hey, on the market, Here's my best advice to you on the market. Hey, in negotiating contracts and in the negotiation process, here's my expert advice there. Hey, under contract, right? We've accepted this offer. Here's all the things that you need to know. My expert advice there. So you can see that along the seller's customer journey, you learn how to deliver expert advice, earning becoming the next top listing agent. The third thing that I wrote down in the earning it phase is follow up. Okay, here it is, right? So there's two types of follow-up that I've done some training on. There's a great video on this that I did. You should watch. And I realized that there's following up on a suspect. A suspect is, hey, I'm thinking about selling my home. I'm interested in maybe the value of my home, but I don't have a plan yet. I'm not super clear about my motivation, but you know, I'm someone that I engage you because maybe sometime in the future I will sell my home. What's the follow-up plan for that person, which is very different than what I refer to as the follow-through plan, follow-through plan. Hey, I'm going to sell my home in the next six months. Here's my plan. Here's my motivation. This is the timing of this. What is your follow through plan to earn that listing? Very different. The suspect versus the highly committed to selling their home. How does that map into your CRM? How does that map into your follow up plan? So you can see in phase two, this is where all the work is. Phase three, here's how I wrote it down. You have to understand the va your value to a homeowner in this process. Now, now, what do I mean by this? Well, when I was working for sale by owners here in San Diego, a for sale by owner would challenge me on my value. They would basically say, I don't see the value of paying you five, 10, 15, 20, $100,000 for you to represent me in the sale of my home. And so I was really challenged to articulate what my value was to a homeowner. And that really is important. Then the second part of phase three is your pre-listing presentation. What do I mean by that? Most people refer to this as the pre-listing package. So if, I, if someone called me up and said, hey, I'm going to interview you plus three other agents, right? What I would want to send in advance is a pre-listing presentation. Who am I, my company, my bio, my reviews, my profiles, my promise to home sellers, my latest housing market update video, what we should discuss, and any relevant information that they would need to be able to a review before I showed up so that when I showed up, I could be super efficient and I can really have an opportunity to win the business before I even get there. Okay. If you guys haven't checked out my video interview with the, the founder of high note, uh, please take a look at that. The high notes, fantastic. He gave me a discount code for 20% off. So if you really want to take a look at high note as a tool to help you with your pre-listing presentation, grab my discount code and get the 20% off and sign up there. I think it's phenomenal. Okay. The third thing, of course, is really the script for showing up on the listing presentation. And I think there's a lot of people who have phenomenal scripts. There's a lot of scripts I don't think are very good at all. So I wrote down five fundamental things that we need to cover on a listing presentation. Let's take a look at the five things that I recommend you cover in a listing presentation. Number one is discovering what's important to them, their fears, their concerns, and answering any of their questions. Number two is to confirm which way that they want to sell their home. 
Did they want to sell a cash offer to an investor? Did they want to do a full remodel and everything in between? Number three is to really, what is the main outcome of all of your marketing efforts, right? And so it's, how do we get them to a multiple offer position? Number four is to review three things, how you prepare property, pricing strategy, and your negotiation skills. And then number five is really, how do we get them to hire you to help them create the plan versus what I'm seeing a lot of today, which is where we go give them every bit of information, but so did the other agent and so did the other agent. So when they look at, when we all show up and just give them every bit of our knowledge, wisdom, and expertise, and we don't ask them to hire us to get all of that, it's kind of weird to me. So in 2022, I really think that we need to up our game with our listing presentation, which is the why hire us script. So the next thing, which is phase number four, which is design a modern marketing plan that can be executed on every listing. So for every listing, we need to be able to meet the neighbors, add them to our database and earn and find the next listing appointment and to leverage this listing for our brand with our past client center of influence and to create marketing that lasts forever. Well, how the heck do we do that? There's two things for us in this phase number four that I wrote down. Number one is creating a modern version of a just listed, just sold marketing campaign. Now, what does that look like? Well, I did do a whole video on this and I broke into the details, the copy, how to get it done. So just check that out. But just for simple facts, we got to look at the truth is a just listed and a just sold postcard or some just listed, just sold. The value of that information is zero because most homeowners have Zillow, Redfin, Realtor on their phone. So they already looked at the photos and looked at the price, read your description. They actually had, they already learned more than your postcard would do. And so they already learned everything. So seeing your postcard is kind of irrelevant to them. Same thing with the sold. They already looked at the sold. They already looked at the property. They've already evaluated the property. So your sold postcard, is not really that helpful helpful at the end of the day. So, well, what would be valuable? So I asked the main question, which is if I was the next seller in the marketplace, what would I want from you, the listing agent who just listed a property in my neighborhood? Would I want an invitation to the open house if you did one? Yes. Um, would I want to know what happened in the buyer demand negotiation? what the activity level was? Would I want to know how many offers you got when you when the property went into escrow? Yes. Would I, if you made me an offer that said something along the lines of, would you like to know what today's buyers would be willing to pay for your unique property? Would that be a good offer to me if I was the next seller in the neighborhood? Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. And then on the last thing is really kind of what happened in the sale, in the negotiation? Did you drive the three uh, buyers significantly over list price? What did that, what happened there? And then did that homeowner recommend you? Did they write a testimonial saying to all of the neighbors that you they recommend you as a phenomenal listing agent, right? And are you making me any type of offer to communicate with you about that sale and getting more details? So when I really thought about what the next seller in the neighborhood want, that is sounds like the marketing plan we need to design and get into execution so that you can earn that next listing appointment. The second thing in the modern listing presentation, modern marketing for your listings to me was using video for uh, creating content, evergreen content, not just on the listing, about the neighborhood and or about the city. And so for those of you that have been following along with me about YouTube SEO, this neighborhood educational video and the city educational video, those things are making a lot of money right now, not your listing video right, of you featuring just the property. That's good, that's valuable, but that has a time frame. it goes extinct. These could last forever and generate business for you for the next two years. So what are we doing about creating content for the neighborhood, building your YouTube channel and your educational portfolio? To me, that is the big winner right now. Let's take a look at what I wrote down for phase five. Phase five, I wrote down, how does the strategy of preeminence, Jay Abraham, talked about the strategy of preeminence. How does that work in real estate? Now, what does that mean? It means how do you become the most trusted real estate advisor and most referable realtor in town? So I wrote down two things, which is what is your content mission statement? Meaning how are you presenting yourself on social media, on YouTube, in video, on your website and presenting your expert advice on how to sell the housing market, you know, tips for selling a home, how to sell your house fast, right? Where is all of your education 
as a professional real estate agent, on what platform and where does it live? Is it discoverable? Right? Discoverable is YouTube, discoverable is maybe LinkedIn, discoverable is a website versus social media, which kind of flies and go, comes and goes, comes and goes, and it's not really there, it's not very depth. So really your content mission statement to me is really important. I've been working with all my clients on that. And then the last thing is I wrote down, what's your marketing plan to build and love on a database of homeowners so you uh, reduce the number of times that you have to compete and reduce all your marketing costs? Let me repeat that. Here's the second thing I wrote down, which is what is your education marketing plan for building a database of homeowners who get educated from you on a regular basis where you earn the position as their realtor for life and the most trusted real estate advisor. So what does that look like for you to have in the modern world of digital, of YouTube, of LinkedIn, of social media, and of email? How are you building a massive database and earning in their mind, you becoming the most successful, most trusted real estate advisor, i.e. mega listing agent. So my friends, that's the five phases. I know you need to go deeper on all of these. Let's figure out which phase makes the most sense for you. And I'll put a playlist right here for the uh, how to get listings. And then I'll put a playlist right here on how to become the next listing agent where you can go deeper in each one of these things. Hope this was helpful. Have an awesome day.